and we're talking with Henry Lewis. Now, Henry, good morning to you. And uh, no, Olivier, award-winning actor, director, producer and creative director of Mischief. And Henry's work has been produced in over 50 countries nationwide. Whoa. Mm, that's that's me. Hello. <laughs> Can I just say, though, before we go any further, there's something missing off there completely. Um, I heard rumours that you were the third junior magician of the year when you were 15 years old. Why is it not on this amazing list of accolades? No, it's true. It should be out there in pride of place. Absolutely. 100%. I mean, the Mind Mangler, actually, the character I play in the show, um, wears a, uh, a medal, you know, is a, pr a proudly achieved medal. And if you look close, it's a little detail. It's, it's mainly just for the poster. Um, but if you look closely at the medal, it does say that he won the under 12s magic competition in 1999. So he's really, uh, really clinging on to the accolade he won all those years ago. It, this is a brilliant show. For people who've never seen it, two characters, Keith and Steve, who will come from your other show, The Magic Show That Goes Wrong, which is mm. part of an amazing list of uh, plays that go wrong ideas. And I, uh, all of them are fantastic. And having been involved um, in Am Dram at some point in most of our lives, hopefully, we recognise the play that goes wrong is the best thing in the world because it highlights that kind of like, Oh my gosh, this is like, I've been there when you've repeated that page 9,000 times. I've been there when something's fallen over or collapsed or someone's been hit or whatever. It's just funny. And in that line of thinking, we get to the show that you're in right now, which is fantastic, right? Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, it, it's, yeah, the, the, the characters were certainly born in, in that show, which um, was the first kind of goes wrong thing we'd written with anyone else. We, we wrote it with Penn and Teller, the magicians and, and uh, you know, amazing kind of Las Vegas uh, legends, you know, Penn and Teller. And um, we learned a lot about magic. and We really enjoyed it. And we really enjoyed those characters. And we really kind of enjoyed the mind mangler and his sort of bitterness and his his slightly kind of tragically comic life and um, his relationship with Steve, his stooge. Um, who's obviously supposed to be there to help him out and make the tricks look uh, more impressive, but actually does the opposite. Um, so, yeah, it was a really, really fun thing. And we thought, well, you know what, we could give this character, you know, his own show. And um, uh, and and so we did. We put together we put together this brand new show. We, we started it out at the Edinburgh Festival in uh, summer of uh, 2022. And then we took it on tour at the beginning of last year. And then we did it in New York at the end of last year. And then the West End on, on tour now. So it's been a sort of couple of years journey. Um, and it's been a blast. I mean, it's a really, really fun show. There's lots of sort of audience input. We find out stuff about the audience. We ask them their, uh, what their darkest secrets are. We find out about what they do for a living. We, we, we sort of, we talk to the audience a lot. And so it's always a little bit different. You're never going to get the same show twice. And um, that makes it a real, a real joy to do. And really, really, really fun to come and see. I think it's always... Uh, really kind of live and, and interesting it really truly is i have seen this a couple of times i saw your first night of the preview in london it was amazing mm. i've seen it in milton Keynes already once before and i'm so glad you're coming back mm. and i love i love steve as the audience member and i love the the t-shirt that says audience member i think <laughs> that's a lovely touch to something that's a bit you know it's it's obvious, but it's not obvious. But the thing that really got me after the first time, I sort of went, surely, just surely they're plants. And all these other people are not there. Like, you come and watch this show, people will reveal their darkest secret se secrets, but also they're real people, right? They totally are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, we have the very obvious stooge in, in the form of Steve, but no, everybody else is real and all that stuff. Yeah, it's different every show. And um, it's, it's always really, really, really fun. And uh, interesting to talk to different people it's a real it's a real privilege yeah and i love the fact that but you see what people miss i think sometimes in that is there is an illusion going on at that point somewhere along the line where you're able to read minds and it's done really well and it's so fantastic as a an illusion so you then you know work out who people are and who who, who it is it's just brilliantly done but in a way that people are laughing with you and obviously at keith right Mm, yeah, absolutely. I think so. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, hopefully at the character and sort of with the performance. But yeah, I think, um, yeah, no, it's, um, he's a lovely guy, you know, I think, I mean, he's not a lovely guy, but he's, he, I, I feel for him, you know, he's gone through a, a hard time. He's recently been divorced and is kind of, you know, he's sort of living out of his car and stuff. And he, he's kind of, you know, he, he, he's trying to get his career back on track. And he's had a bit of a bit of luck as a producer who's come along and taken some interest in his act, uh, which is good news. But um, and I, won't give, I, won't, I won't give away the, yes. what happens, but um, 
but but it doesn't quite turn out as he thought it would and, and and so i think i think when that happens i think the audience yeah do feel bad for him even though he's obviously got a lot of uh, a lot of problems that are kind of self generated i think you loved magic as a child but was it something you've always mm. grown up with like someone inspired you or there was a magician you really liked or no, I mean, yeah, I mean, there were magicians I, I, I really enjoyed, and I, I, I was a big fan of it when I was a kid. I didn't really, you know, I, I did that that magic competition when I was fifteen, and then by the time I was kind of eighteen, I, I left school, I went to drama school, you know, and and, and kind of did that, and became an actor, and I didn't uh, continue magic through really. So it was really fun once we kind of first started talking to Penn and Teller. We first spoke to them in you know, 2018, first did Magic Goes Wrong in 2019. It, it, that, that was a really fun time of, of kind of reconnecting with something I hadn't done for a long time. And uh, and um, and then, yeah, my, my manga was a, a fun extension of that. Yeah, no, completely. Because I think there's a moment when, and Penn and Teller are amazing, aren't they? They just, they're so mm. good at not just the the magic because magic is part of it but it's the act that goes with it and they have created mm. um a persona and and something on stage and your character keith and steve are those personas of people on stage did you know anybody like that have you met people like that when you were like learning about what you the magic and all that kind of stuff when we first started writing with Penn and Teller, we went out to Vegas for about three weeks and we, we spent some time with them there. Um, and they were doing their their show. They do their residency at the Rio. And so we stayed there and they did their show in the evening. We, we, we were writing during the days. So um, during the evening, as well as watching their show, we went all around Vegas and watched lots of different magic shows uh, to get kind of inspiration. And um, there was one, which I won't name, but there was yeah, there yeah. was one mind reader who I went to go and see, who was doing just you know a small you know small small show in a you know you know in a room in a in a hotel, and 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 he had a real kind of bitterness, a real kind of anger to him, and he got quite frustrated with the uh, with the audience, you know, and and obviously like if you're a mind reader, I kind of I don't know if you've been doing that day in day out. I kind of understand it because I think you're obviously you know you just really you know like audience management is a big part of your day in the same way that if you. I don't know, if you work in a restaurant, you might become frustrated with the customers. He kind of had that, but obviously on stage, it just doesn't, uh, you know, it's just, it's just obviously not a good way to be. And so he would just kind of have a bit of a pop at everyone. And so, yeah, that was, a that, that he he was a big inspiration, I think, for for the Mind Mangler. And we sort of took that and we did more of a, you know, more of a British version of it. But, but yeah, that was definitely a starting point. Because there is a, a, just there's some brilliant moments where you are, so good, Henry, at dealing with the audience as your character Keith to work with them, but also for them to become incredibly like there's a frustration, but there's a there's a there's a like a great bubbling to a point moment where um uh, without giving too much away, and it's just it's lovely because like you yeah you're in control but actually it feels like it's a, a real out of control moment. I love it, absolutely love it. I'm uh, in there as well, so it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Uh, the, you you said about America and you went to Vega, obviously Vegas there, and you went to America, you were in America, America just recently with the My Mangler before you did the West End uh, tour. Mm. How did how did they receive this, what could only be described as quite British performance? They enjoyed it, I think. I mean, we, we were actually in New York uh, doing uh, two different shows last year. We did Peter Pan Goes Wrong for a, a large chunk of uh, last year on Broadway last year. And um I think um, of the two, I think that one connected better with the with the American audience because I think it has a lot of heart to it. If yeah. Pan goes wrong, there's a love story that runs through it, and there's lots of lots of kind of elements. Uh, you know, it's a bit more kind of yeah. I think just just I think it had the dynamics that that you know a, a kind of Broadway audience is looking for. Whereas I think with Mind Mangler, I, I think they enjoyed it, but I think it's it's more of a niche show over there because I think uh, yeah, I think the you know the kind of flawed. I think there's only so much patience an American audience has with a sort of flawed hero. You know, I think um, you know, and I mean, there, I don't know, there are lots of kind of lots of flawed heroes in American stuff, but I think it you know it when you're when someone really is their own worst enemy. I think there's not quite the same patience. Whereas I think in the UK, I think we quite like that. I think we quite like people, um, yeah, people, people getting it, people getting themselves into into a mess uh, and 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 causing problems because of who they are. Yeah. Whereas I think in America, they quite like it. There's a sort of more heroic expectation of kind of like people. They they, they like stories of people overcoming external obstacles, not not flaws to do with their character, but. Um, 
uh, but 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 problems in the world and, and it, it, I guess that kind of classic story is all, is all kind of generalizations not true in all cases but generally that's what we found if you love magic you will love the mind magler if you love comedy you love the mind magler if you don't like magic but you love comedy come and see the mind magler um if you don't like comedy but just like the <laughs> magic just come and see the mind magler uh, it is hilariously funny from start to finish you um, are able to lead the audience like a merry Hack as you uh, dance us around uh, with your amazing, <laughs> fantastic illusions and tricks. The Rubik's Cube is just amazing. I love that bit. Um, <laughs> I love the fridge. That's in your trailer, so I'm not giving anything away. And <laughs> just leading to the point where the, the discovery moment uh, with uh, Steve is fantastically um, uh, awe-inspiring and also like, oh my gosh, what uh, moment. I, I absolutely <laughs> love it. Henry, thank you for being with us. But before you go... Look, mm. if Keith is there, we would love a little bit of mind reading. So I know that you, you guys post to Twitter and um, I know that, um, that that you were recently asked five words to sum up the Mind Mangler show, right? Five words. OK, we so did, these yeah. real, yeah. three people have really given their real five word answers. So they just trust me okay. on this one. I've seen it loads of times and I know it's amazing, but these are the people. So so I want you Okay, with your amazing mind, uh, Mangala tricks uh, and thoughts process here, to be able to give us that <laughs> final word in the five. Okay, are you ready for That's this? Okay, yeah, right. Ready, yeah. Aiden said, "Voltage, crab, mind, 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 audience, and voltage, crab, mind, audience." And, and his last well, word I... was. So voltage was so okay. Let me try and get this. Well, I mean the voltage was the thing that came up because someone was a particular engineer the other day, one of the okay. jobs that we had was, so I wonder if it's maybe to do with that, to do with, uh, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to guess electronics, but I'm probably wrong. It's outstanding. The last word was outstanding. Outstanding. Well, that's very nice. Well, I obviously it wasn't outstanding mind reading that time, but um, <laughs> I'm glad they enjoyed the show. Uh, right. Uh, two more. Um, HB Bear. And that's weird when people have weird names on Twitter, right? Uh, HB Bear, um, <laughs> what is the final word? Amazing, touching, mysterious, hilarious, and the last word. Magical. Was... Oh, that would be good. Genius, apparently. Genius, with, very good. With an exclamation mark. Come on. Um, and then finally, Gillian, um, her word is mind, 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 mind. And what's the last word? It must be mind. It's got to be mind, right? <laughs> where did Very that come good. from? That is really good. So, thank, well done for playing. Um, what, what was why? Did, where did mind the mind bit come from? Did it just literally you sat there in Vegas going, "I'm writing this thing on this mind, 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 mind"? Is that how it came about, or is that that joke actually was initially the idea was that you had um, <laughs> he had <laughs> it was a bit more elaborate. The idea was that he had a little smoke machine in his sleeve, and he used to kind of whatever he said, mind, there'd be a little puff of smoke. Uh, but it was actually very, very tricky to get that happening on cue. So we said, well, why don't we do it with the sound effects? And we got into trouble with it, actually, because we did a Mind Mangler appearance. At, it was, well, Prince Charles's 70th birthday, obviously the king now, but he was Prince Charles at the time. And um, he was, it was his birthday celebration. It was an evening of, of comedy and magic at the London Palladium. And we did the Mind Mangler uh, sort of for it, sitting between comedy and magic. And um, we did the mind sort of joke. But what we didn't know is that there'd been a magician earlier in the evening who had really done that for real. And so it looked like we were t t sort of very directly pastiching this other magician, uh, who I also won't name. But um, so, yeah, we got into a bit of trouble for that. But uh, it's a fun thing. And it's always been it's always been fun in the show. It's always really fun. And the audience get involved with it. And it's it's uh, it's yeah. a really fun bit. And I won't spoil uh, anything about it because um just the sheer interaction with a particular name and other things. And what I was really pleased about your preview, by the way, is there's genuinely there are people there who've seen you before and don't spoil it. I love that. I love the fact that people mm. come and watch it and don't spoil it for others. Do you know what I mean? And, and shout out or whatever, do whatever, because it could be easily done, right? Yeah, I mean, I suppose, I mean, you know, like I say, lots of the show is 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 sort of different, but um, you, know, you get the occasional person who kind of, uh, you know, is maybe preempts a joke or whatever. But no, on the whole, I think um, everyone comes back and is is uh, yeah, is very respectful. Absolutely. Uh, right. Final thing, then. Thank you so much for your time at the Olivia Awards in 2016. You said, mm. as a character, uh, it is often said that sequels are created by writers generally devoid of new ideas and a shameless attempt to make as much money from their original fluke as possible. Do you still stand by that? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I said that in 2016. So I think we were at the same time. We, we just done Peter Pan goes wrong uh, at, at that time, and so I think we were we were we were talking about ourselves as much as anyone. Um, but no, I mean, look, I mean, you know, it's um, I don't know. We're we're always trying to strike the balance of doing new stuff, yeah, uh, but also kind of um, do, you know, uh, you know, continuing to, uh, to to kind of work within the, the sort of brand. Uh, it goes wrong brand that we've set up um, and, and and one can kind of support the other. Um, it is, uh, I think it's, you know, the world is different, I think. And, you know, it is it is sometimes tricky to um, always be pursuing completely original stuff. Yeah. Um, I think you've got to have a healthy mix of uh, of sort of, um, of uh, yeah, of, of sort of continuing brands that you grow and new things, I think. It's Any, anything part. we're allowed to know about the future? Anything you've got about lined future. up? Anything there like are a couple of at the things. moment? There's two, yeah, two different projects that we're working on that are new. They're yet to be announced, so okay. I can't say anything sure. at the moment. But um, but there's more mischief in the pipeline for sure. Well, that's good. I really enjoyed Grown Ups. I, I wanted to see that mm. on tour personally, but um, um, and I really enjoyed it in the West End. I thought it was brilliant. Saw you in that. Have you been in all of them? Yeah, yeah, I've done. Um, well, yeah, me, my, yeah, I've been uh, yeah on the writing team and and and, and in the, in all the shows and uh, uh, yeah. So it's been a real a real adventure. No, it's brilliant. And long may the adventure continue uh, with Mischief Centre and also the Mind Mangalit, which is coming to Milton Keynes Theatre at 3rd to the 5th of June. Uh, Henry, you're a star and you obviously get on really well with Jonathan. So give him our love as well. And he, the two of you work so well together. What's really lovely is it just shines that you guys seem to enjoy each other's company. I think that's brilliant. Uh, well, we've been best friends for a long time, so no, it's it's um, it, yeah, it's always a pleasure coming to work with uh, with people you love. So no, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Right. Well, thank you so much for your time for 105.5 The Point. Take care, Simon. Thank you.